Welcome, I am Teresa Sigmund, founder of Seam Sensational and creator of the Sew Like a Pro training series. And I am so thrilled that you have chosen to invest in the Advanced Latin Skate Ball Gown Program. There are so many cool things going on in here. Hold your needles, hold your sewing machine. Let's talk about what's gonna happen over the next few weeks. So each week, for the length of time that it takes us to make this dress, each week we'll, you will be released a new module. And in each module is a series of training videos, photographs, PDF downloads, anything and everything you need to do to get you from step one to step R for rhinestone. <laughs> And there is also a commentary form at the bottom of each module section, just like you'll see at the bottom of this video. Feel free to post any inspiring comments you have, any revelations or breakthroughs that you had while you were doing the work to help others sort of make it through this process that can sometimes be really arduous. <laughs> what you are going to need to have on hand to get yourself going to get started cutting out this leotard is i am using a cutting mat therefore i have my rotary cutter but i also keep my good fabric scissors handy for cutting really tight corners and things like that of course if you do not have a rotary cutter don't cut on your dining room table use your scissors for everything it's just a little slower but it still works you will want all of your pattern pieces, which we have covered in another video. Everything is marked on here. I've prepared for snaps in the crotch. I've got the shoulder marked, the neckline, front and back is all marked and ready to go to fit about an inch larger than where her bra is estimated to hit her. You want to have your sketch with the measurements handy in here and fabric weights of course we love these your box of straight pins and the picture there and marking pencils as well as tracing paper and your tracing wheel i'm going to use four squares and i'm going to hold it close at the bottom four squares and just pull and then how many squares does that go to it goes to about seven squares okay if I lay the fabric the other way, I'm gonna grab four squares again, about the same distance from the edge, and that only goes to about six and a half squares and it's really tight. Therefore, I know the other direction has more stretch. That is what I want to go around her bodice. We're gonna always cut out the back first because it's the largest piece. This is a really long piece. One, because this lady is 5'8", and two, because I've got an extra two inches added here for snaps in the crotch. And of course, I shortened the front stride two inches as well. So, I want to lay this right out here, and then just fold my fabric up so that I've got a nice fold there that's about the width of her hips. And it looks like this fabric was not cut very straight because I have my edge lined up over here. That's okay. This was um, about two yards, which is slightly over two meters of fabric. As we discussed in the previous video, that's pretty typical for an average double layer leotard. Now I'm gonna show you this from a different view. I'll turn this right around for you. And so what we have here is I've got an, an extra two inch addition for the stride. No seam allowance, or yes, a seam allowance, sorry about that. And then it just fades right in once I get past this narrow part. It just fades right in. No seam allowances anywhere else. I marked my waist, my hips, waist hips, also on the reverse side, yes then fade out to a seam allowance at what will be the top of the zipper. As you can see from the space behind me, I'm in the sewing room now, ready to go. So things you wanna have handy, sharp snipper scissors, seam ripper, and your box of pins. There may be a couple of little odds and ends as we go along, but for the most part, that's really all you need. It's pretty darn simple as we're doing the sewing. What I want to do is just 
stitch right around the perimeter. And generally it will take you from start to finish about an hour to baste everything together and then give it a quick press and fit. And quite often you don't even really have to fit. So generally it's going to be an hour for you to, I'm winding a bobbin here, that's what the clicking is. Generally it will take you about an hour to make a pattern and cut everything out. If you're new, allow two <laughs> because you're not going to be as fast as you will later on. And then it generally takes about an hour to go ahead and baste everything together and do a quick pre-fitting on the mannequin. So the dress wants to settle right here. And I didn't want it to do that, of course. So as I was pinning it, I pulled the dress all up where I wanted it to go. And then this is all nice and flat. Faye will have three petite little keyholes here, which I'll close up with bridal buttons or some kind of rhinestone button. It'll be very nice. But I want you to look at the difference in how smooth this is versus where the leotard wants to hit just by itself. This is not a great look for anyone of any age or size. So if you have really beautiful skin like Faye does and you want to show it, but you don't want the full coverage of mesh, I recommend coming in and maybe running two or three really pretty decorative straps, which would hold the leotard up, and but still allow skin to show. I would also not put any elastic up here because you don't want the elastic to dig in and help create the gush. So I would finish this off with no elastic and then just do your decorative straps right here. And that way you could kind of have your cake and eat it too as far as skin showing, but a really smooth look. I have also gone ahead and stitched together the ruffles to the lining layer on top. And as you can see, this, once you stitch this together, it lies really, really nicely if you don't ease it in and or you don't stretch it. So I am the steaming queen. <laughs> and this is one of those times when I'll say, you don't really have to steam. Because if you try to go in and steam it, inevitably you end up getting the organza layer all caught in there and you steam creases in it. So on this particular layer, you're best off not steaming at all which is pretty awesome because then it saves you a step. But you always want to have your ruffle layer on top because it's got the most bulk and it's the most likely to get caught up underneath here and cut off. That being said, because of the curve of this fabric, it's also very easy for this to want to sneak up in there like that. And then the blade will, as you're stitching along, the blade will come in and go snip and you'll have a big old hole in your skirt. Welcome back. I'm Teresa Sigmund, founder of Seam Sensational and creator of Sew Like a Pro. And we are back working on mesh and the skirt today in the complete advanced program, which is usable for Latin skate and ball gown, which is really exciting. So second fitting is over. We have a lot of work to do before the third fitting. So let's just keep moving on and do what we need to do. So what I have done is I have pinned on, I've put the dress on, or the leotard on the dress form and gone ahead and pinned on the mesh because I want to show you what this should look like. And then we're gonna tear it apart and I'm gonna show you how to get to this stage. Before I permanent stitch and overlock, I want to do a couple of things beforehand and they do not necessarily have to be in either order, these two things. One, I want to go through and look at all of my seams up close and make sure that I don't have any seams that go, you know, when it's supposed to be a straight line. Sometimes this happens. It is not really a great thing when it happens. You want to fix it before you permanent stitch and serge. So I go in and lay everything nice and flat and just take a look at it and say, okay, well, this one is curvy at the right place. It goes in at the waist and out at the hip and my lines are straight. So this is overall a good thing. All right, surging is done, pressing is done, and now let's go in and finish off these leg elastics and cut off all these extra seams. Now, when I'm doing the leg elastic, I don't really wanna sew through all this thick seam again, so I do take quite a bit off. 
This is where it's going to get stitched. It's really thick. Oh yeah, because of all the fabric, all the layers in there. And then I'm going to go in and raise that up so that when I stitch the elastic on there, I don't have so much bulk in the way. Let's move on to the skirt because I want to show you a couple things. Now, Andrea's, I've moved the mirror out here. Andrea's been staring at it. She's gotten used to having this much leg. I think it's really sexy, yet still sophisticated. And that was your pretty much goal, goal. yes? That's Excellent, goal. nicely done then. So, front line we're good on. I've, the skirt is going to stitch on right here with this as asymmetrical line, which is good. Any kind of asymmetrical line is going to help minimize her natural asymmetricalness or yours. I mean, because like you've heard me say so many times, a lot of people are like this and they don't have scoliosis. It's just a muscular imbalance. So asymmetrical lines help diminish that because it helps camouflage it. And then Andrea has a pretty darn good tush. So <laughs> we are going to accent that. And I want it, so long as your, your profile here, we can do a couple of things. Now, if you have a tummy, and Andrea has a really flat tummy, so she's not a good example for this, but if, let's say she had a tummy, and I were to pull this skirt really, really tight when it's stitched on, it would hug the stomach underneath. And no matter how flat your stomach is, we have fat here because we're female. <laughs> Almost all of us do. So we don't, I don't want to make it tight here. I want to leave it just hanging straight off down the tummy. So as you're pinning on your skirt, make sure it hangs just straight off. All right, now I want to come in and start filling in this space so that I can figure out what the heck I'm going to do with the sleeve because I only glued on some of the sleeve lace because I'm not really sure what I want to do with it. The inspiration photo looks like there's lace that kind of twines around on the arm, but that is way too busy for this dress design. So I don't know. <laughs> One of those times I don't really have a concrete idea. But what I do know, this is like so fun because I just get to move things around and it's instantly gratifying, which is fantastic. Now I might end up thinking this is too dense. And if I do, then I will come in and <laughs> remove some things. Okay, now I think what I'm gonna try to do is create a little V shape right here. One, because I don't really want all this thickness in the armpit. It's gonna be really uncomfortable when the arms are down. Two, even if you're doing American style, you know, yes, your arms are up a lot in American style, but if, so long as this is a nice shape, it doesn't just look like there's a big empty spot in the, in the armpit area. So at least that gives us a better idea of what this looks like. So I've got this going down towards the outside of the elbow, which is great. And this is going to overlap really nicely up here. And I can, of course, always cut some extra pieces. I like the openness that's going on here, even though I've, I'll of course need a few more little guys up in here, which I will probably wait and put on once the, um, once the sleeve is really set in. And in this video, we are going to talk about how best to plan your rhinestoning for these awesome flexible bracelets. Now, I have them pinned onto a cardboard fabric bolt, but you could use any kind of cardboard, any kind of box, anything that you don't mind getting glue on. So I have four sizes of bracelets laid out here. This flesh colored one is an eighth of an inch, which is almost seven millimeters exactly. And then one row of 30s fits perfectly on that. Now in this particular instance, I'm using it as an example only. So it is just the flesh colored lycra. It does not have any, I'm sorry, it's the flesh colored elastic. It does not have any lycra on it. I do not recommend rhinestoning directly on the elastic. It won't stick. <laughs> you will pop them off after probably the first time you wear them. So cover your elastics with fabric, stretch fabric, of course. We are tackling some of the basic rhinestoning today, which will help us create a really fantastic look. Now, what we're ultimately going to create on this dress is something like this. This is the bottom of the skirt, which has been 
already finished. It's got a combination of 30s, 20s and 16s in several different colors. I'm using Light Siam AB, Indian Pink AB, and Crystal AB. Oh, and Rose AB, just to sort of create a nice depth. And then all of the fringe here, which you can of course not do on yours because it is labor intensive and adds more money, um, is a really fun look. So this is what we're going to do on the neckline today. As I go along, I want to make sure that I rhinestone evenly on both sides and then come back in and do um, take a look at it from a distance to make sure that it's a straight line that I want. And do a little bit of this side. Because this is a symmetrical neckline, and it doesn't matter whether you're doing a symmetrical point or a symmetrical round, you want to make sure that your necklines are symmetrical. And you see how this V wants to round out? I don't really want it to round out. I want it to be a really nice V. So I'm letting my rhinestones hang ever so slightly off the fabric onto the mesh. So you want to make sure that you have just the right amount of glue because <laughs> you don't want it oozing out all underneath. If you are new at rhinestoning and you, um, you, know, you have not done this a lot, definitely practice on some scrap fabric, preferably the same kind of fabric until you, know, until you feel comfortable doing so. And then you'll just, like I am, just constantly keep wiping the glue off the syringe. A clean syringe makes for a happy rhinestoner, <laughs> for sure. And I am so pleased to say <laughs> that the gown for the complete basic program is finished. And I always do this. I put it on the mannequin and I will look over everything and make sure I didn't miss things. What I'm looking for on this final thing, even if I'm wearing the dress, I go in, I make sure I've snipped off threads anywhere that I've missed. And I also go in and get rid of the white chalk marks. So you know how um, when Lisa was in on this one, I drew a white line around it where the lace was gonna go. So I've got a bunch of dots here. Um, you may have dots where you, your skirt was going to be attached. There are multiple places armholes where you may have chalk marks, pencil marks that have not worn off yet. So get a scrap of fabric. Use the same color fabric. Don't ever use black just or red in case it fades on the dress. Um, I'm pretty sure I did that at some point in time. <laughs> Hello, my name is Liesl Andrico and this is my first seam sensational dress, which I absolutely love. It fits fabulous. Working with Teresa was uh, an amazing experience. I learned a lot uh, about dressmaking and about fitting. So Teresa and I, um, of course, what you're going to see are some videos of uh, her working on this dress. Um, and, uh, but what you don't see is when we're working together or when she's talking with me, it's just so much fun. We had a blast and, and I love the result, so thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Andrea Nero Jones and I have had the wonderful experience of working with Teresa Sigmund of Seam Sensational who made this wonderful gown for me. I just couldn't be any happier with it. So I just wanted to take a few minutes and tell you all about this experience. This is the first time I've ever had a gown made for me from scratch like this. Um, I didn't really know what to expect. I'm sure I have been a challenge to Teresa, but she's been wonderful. Um, the ways that I think I've probably been a challenge is that I, you know, I came in with some ideas of what I wanted, but I don't know how to sew a stitch. So I have all these great ideas, but I don't know how anything is constructed or how things are functional. I just know what I want it to look like. So I had some ideas about what I wanted it to look like, and she was wonderful about listening to my ideas, um, gave me some advice about making the color a little bit brighter than I originally thought, and I'm so glad we did that. And uh, so she totally took in some of my ideas, even though I didn't know how to make it happen. I knew what I wanted the outcome to be. 
Um, and it was wonderful working in that collaborative way. I just really enjoyed the creative process. Um, I got to participate in a little bit of the beating, which was just fun. I wanted to do that. Um, and so that part was just really fun to be any part of this whole creative process. So that was great. Um, also, I'm asymmetrical as you we've talked about in the videos before I have a little scoliosis so I'm a little crooked so you know and of course then I want all these great lines on my dress except that I'm not straight so poor Teresa had to adjust all the time for my weird asymmetry and uh, she did it in such a great way without making me feel bad about my wonky body and um, and it turned out great the dress is so comfortable fits so beautifully moves really perfectly and it's just been a great experience and I, you know, I have a lot of friends in the ballroom community who I know have had dresses made other places um, and or bought dresses used, which I've done too. And it can be really stressful, um, but I got to tell you, this has not been, I haven't been stressed out over this one second of the whole time. It's just been a wonderful, fun, creative experience. So I highly recommend Teresa. She clearly knows, you know, what she's doing. The construction is fabulous and she's super creative and really does a good job of listening to her customers kind of wants and needs and gives really good feedback about what will work good on our bodies on the dance floor because that's the other thing um, for folks that are new to the dance community. You know, sometimes what's going down the street is not bright enough, big enough, bold enough for what you want to see on the, on the ballroom floor. And and she's really good at you know meeting our needs but making it big enough for what we need to be seen on the on the bottom floor the way we want I highly recommend her it's been a great experience I love my dress thank you Teresa it's been wonderful